Now, Ed is joined by Ruth Conniff of the Progressive Magazine. How long has this been going on, Fighting Bob Fest? This is our 14th year, Fighting Bob Fest. Has it had an impact? I, I think that Fighting Bob Fest can actually take credit for the Bernie Sanders campaign this year. I really do. Really? Yeah, I mean, Bernie Sanders has drawn, he's come year after year, he's drawn huge crowds. And last year, it was the kickoff of his presidential campaign. Came back to Madison, got 10,000 people. That was the first of those big rallies that started to make headlines around the country. Okay, so Bernie's kind of, he's got maybe one of the godfathers of this, huh? He really is. He wrote us a letter. He has a conflict in New Hampshire where he's busy winning the Democratic primary to say he was so sorry not to be here at Fighting Bob Fest. He's a great friend of Ed Garvey who founded this thing and really wishes he could be here today. But it was kind of sweet that we were hearing a letter from him last night. So what was going Garvey's mission when he first started this? This actually came out of a successful fight to stop a Perrier plant from coming into a local community in Wisconsin, displacing people, displacing jobs. And there was such a great progressive upswell. And Garvey, who was part of that fight, wanted to figure out how do we make this a permanent feature of Wisconsin politics? How do we gather progressives the way 100 years ago Fighting Bob LaFala did to get people together to try to push back against the corporate interests? And out of that came this idea. With, together with Jim Hightower and Paul Wellstone, Stone. They created this annual event, progressives, hearing great speakers, and then having some breakout sessions and panels where they talked about actually trying to make a difference in state legislation. So all of these tents, are these kind of like workshops that are going on? Yeah, exactly. Informational stands to different communities around uh, Wisconsin? Yeah, I mean, we're really mostly talking about state issues in these workshops. So it's environmental protection, pushing back against sand frack mining, public education, the privatization of our schools, racial justice. We have one session after another, women's health. And and the idea is really that this should be a model that can be replicated in every state of the union. Well, I was going to ask you that. Has anybody else picked up on this? It's always been the ambition. And I think it's really time that it starts to happen. Hightower talks about it every year. And what we really need are some folks to come here from other states around here and say, hey, this could really be done. Just pick up the model and go with it. What's the resource? It's free. People are walking in for free. What's the resource? We pass around buckets and ask people for donations. And they give generously. And that's how we keep it going. Okay. So the mission, I mean, is this a Bernie Sanders event, so to speak? I mean, he's been so connected to it. I mean, are these Sanders supporters here? I would say that you have a very, very large percentage of Bernie Sanders supporters in this crowd, yeah. Okay. And how is his campaign in Wisconsin going? I mean, it's going pretty well. I mean, you know, Wisconsin was one of the places where he got 10,000 or more people to come out to hear his message. Yeah. And really, I think a lot of Wisconsinites have seen what's happening to us under Scott Walker, the corporatization of everything, the, you know, just the total stripping down austerity politics that we've seen here. So Bernie's message is very resonant for people. Here. Would Hillary win Wisconsin against any of the Republicans? I don't know. I mean, Sanders is so strong. And I think even if you talk to Sanders campaign people, they will say that his strength does not bode well for Hillary. And that's why people like Biden are thinking about getting in. Mm -hmm. Well, if conventional wisdom, I think, is if, if Biden jumps in, that helps Bernie, doesn't it? It may. I mean, I don't, I don't see, I don't see Bernie supporters peeling off right. to go to Biden. No, I don't think Biden is saying, gee, I'm going to come in and talk about inequality and I'm going to be sort of the Bernie Sanders that has more of a chance. I think he's just saying, gee, the fact that this 70-something-year-old socialist is giving Hillary a run for money in New Hampshire and Iowa mm -hmm. means there's room for another candidate. Okay. Uh, what Trump has done is he's attacked women. There's no, no question about that. Has that given Hillary a platform to, to elevate you know, her status politically and speak from a different perspective from other national candidates. You would think so, but right now, within the Republican Party, Carly Fiorina is trying to take advantage of that, and maybe she can convince people that the Republican Party, having once been the party of women's suffrage, is still the party for women. But I think, you know, I think Trump is a horrible liability for the Republicans because the gender gap is one of their biggest problems, not to mention the Latino vote, which they cannot win without. Mm -hmm. So, you know, he's a disaster for them with women, and that should create an opportunity for Hillary. All right, it's great to see you. Great to see you, Congratulations Ed. on what is a fabulous <laughs> festival. Well, that's one Wonderful to have you here. Bob Fest, absolutely.